All right, we're going to talk about the Civil Air Patrol now on Central Valley Talk. Lieutenant Colonel James Shepard joins me once again, and he was just telling me some fascinating stories about uh, the history of the Air Patrol, and uh, they, people were integrated. It was, it was an integrated organization long before it became popular in America. Right? It was integrated before uh, it was, uh, President Truman in 1947 that gave the order to integrate the services. But before that, there was Civil Air Patrol, who uh, even had a female African-American uh, pilot officer. Um, Back in the when? Like, 20s, 30s? Civil Air Patrol was formed just one week before the start of World War I, December 1st, 1941. And we already knew that we had a big job to do because the German submarines were just literally right outside the ports and the harbors. Mm -hmm. And within two months, within two months of Hitler declaring war on the United States, which happened right after Pearl Harbor, the Germans were sinking one tanker per day. Yikes. 52 tankers with all the men on board were sunk in two months, the first two months of World War II. The Navy didn't have nearly enough resources, and so American volunteer pilots, both male and female, stepped up, joined Civil Air Patrol, and went to do those patrols. They were flying let me show you a picture of them. Okay. They were fl flying. Tilted, so yeah, there you go. Yeah. Little single engine aircraft like this, like uh, Taylor Craft and Stinson's. And on these little tiny airplanes, some of them would hang a 100 pound bomb. Whoop. So if they found the German submarine, they didn't really have to sink it. They just had to do enough damage so that it couldn't dive and then keep track of it so the Navy could come. And, and finish it off. But the, uh, that, that early mission, of course, times were very in, intense, and we had uh, nearly 200,000 volunteers. I mean, the, the Army used to complain, well, gosh, we want to risk our lives for not very much pay. With Civil Air Patrol, the guys were out flying and risking their lives for, for zero, zero pay. pay. That's for, dedication. For, for their country. Said some were World War I pilots who were too old to rejoin the Army Air Corps. And some were just people who, for one reason or the other, like the color of their skin or their gender, had been automatically disqualified from flying for their country. And they said, I'm going to find a way to do it. And they did. And the Civil Air Patrol opened their arms and said, you're welcome here. Yes. That's pretty yes. cool. And today, Civil Air Patrol is still flying for America, but we're just not chasing submarines anymore. <laughs> you chasing that blimp that got away yesterday? <laughs> we weren't involved with the blimp chase. I understand. They scrambled F-16s for that, which, for which, a is, which, which is a, a real challenge to fly formation on a blimp in an F-16, I want to tell you. You used to fly F-4s, and you know none, none of those fighters are really good for blimp interceptors. No, that was a crazy story yesterday. Um, it, right. well, it was crazy. But just, I, I want you to talk about, yeah, the, the yeah, gold medal. You just, just last December, Congress uh, issued a congressional gold medal honoring Civil Air Patrol for their World War, II, World War II service. And we had some of our members who were still alive who personally were able to go to Washington, wow. D.C. And, and to receive that medal. And that's the actual size of the medal. Look how big that is. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not, quite. Not quite. Not quite. But well deserved. But, but well deserved. Yes. As, as, we, as we said, uh, 60, 65 uh, members did, did lose their lives because in, in looking for the submarines, they were flying very low with a single engine up to 60 miles out to sea. And the, the FAA had to suspend their regulations for them to do that, because normally with your single engine, if you go over water, you want to fly high enough so if your engine quits, you can glide the land. 300 feet, you're not gliding anywhere. Ooh, yeah. Those were some and, brave and, men and women. And yeah. those, those guys who uh, did lose that engine with water, they had a, a special little honor for them. They got to join, they called the Duck Club. For the survivors, you know. For the survivors. To, for, the, for the survivors of, of, the, of the duck club. Okay. But our, our local Civil Air Patrol... Is getting ready for the parade. Is getting ready for the parade. And we're hoping to have uh, not just Squadron 112, which is the Fresno Squadron, but the Bakerfield Squadron is joining us, Squadron 121. And because our state commander is from Bakersfield, Lieutenant Colonel Alan Ferguson, I believe, will also be coming for uh, that parade. So we're going to have a number of entries with both cadets and our senior members. Uh, I think our oldest one in our squadron is up to 80, and our cadets as young as 12. So we have 
programs and a, and a place for volunteers to, to serve their country and to learn and grow. It's certainly a leadership program for cadets, but it is a personal growth program for everyone who would like to get involved. And the parade is November the 11th, 11 a.m. in downtown Fresno. Downtown Fresno, yeah. And this parade is, is the largest Veterans Day parade west of the Mississippi. Isn't that amazing? It, in, it in, is. In it, is it is a, a, a huge event. And I think it's really important for people to get out there. And um, there's a lot of veterans organizations there and, uh, and different branches, but that they honor these guys who have uh, put their lives on the line, not once, but, but many times. Many times and uh, really honor that service. Lieutenant Colonel James Shepard from the Civil Air Patrol, thank you for joining us today. All right. And we'll be back with more on Central Valley Talk.